Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. I'm filming from the hotel here in New York City. I was just down on the floor of the stock exchange and was all set to do an interview on CNBC. I was actually in the chair with the little earpiece on and and all that. And uh, President Trump uh, ended up doing his press conference uh, to celebrate and announce the uh, Republican House successfully passing his repeal and replace legislation with Obamacare. So uh, they ended up pulling me right there on set. So uh, then we were gonna use that as this week's Dividend Cafe, that CNBC appearance, decided I'd come back and film it, although I need to get out to a, a, a dinner meeting I have tonight. But there is a, a few things that I wanna go through that would not have been a part of that CNBC interview, so really this kind of maybe worked out better. Really, really interesting week in the markets. Oil was down over 5% today, and the Dow was essentially up. The market indices were all really right around flat. So the, that correlation I'd written about and spoken about several times that had been pretty persistent has uh, kind of broken out in the sense that the oil prices are reflecting a lot of weakness right now. Um, around fear of OPEC uh, getting soft on their production freeze agreement, uh, around fears that there has not been great compliance from other OPEC countries with the agreement, and uh, of course the ongoing chatter about the U.S. shale producers offsetting some of that supply issue because they are uh, uh, ramping up their own production. And I happen to think a lot of it is kind of silly arguments, but the point is it's been moving oil prices lower, and yet the market, uh, besides energy stocks, of course, didn't really respond accordingly here today. Um, some may want to say that the credit for offsetting that weakness would lie with the successful passage of repeal and replace at the House, but I'm a little hesitant to buy into that. I think most people knew that the GOP House was working towards um, a solution and getting their different constituents on board and caucuses and things of that nature. And also, I believe that the market's well priced in into that sector, the places that are have ramifications from it. Um, and of course, ultimately, there's still a lot of questions around what the Senate will do. Um, so fundamentally, it's probably net net a positive for markets. Um, I do think this will end up getting passed into law, but I do think the Senate will be changing it and then passing it, but I think that some of the things the market cares about are gonna stick with the legislation, but I doubt that's kind of the big factor here. So overall, we just still kind of have a stubbornly uh, positive market, um, and I think you uh, have a stubbornly uh, positive bond market as well. Bond yields have not looked to, to reverse, and they've kind of stayed now. We used to talk about 2.6% as kind of this this place on the 10 year would have proved to be a, a basement or a ceiling. And now we're talking about that with 2.3%. So uh, that doesn't mean yields can't blow out again and push bond prices lower. But for now, this seems to be a comfortable place. There is a lot in DividendCafe.com this week that's worthwhile. The Fed didn't cut rates yesterday. No one expected they would. We do now know what they plan to do, at least philosophically or structurally with their balance sheet. But as far as how they get there, it's going to be very interesting. But, you know, they're in a very modest tightening mode. The market knows that. So uh, our eyes right now are on the individual companies, uh, a lot of which have just come through earnings season, a lot of which have had very good news and good outcomes and a lot of dividend growth. Others uh, that have had some, you know, difficult quarters, and that's, that's kind of the way you would expect things to go. But we're approaching client portfolios right now from a very bottom-up standpoint, piece by piece, trimming certain gains where we think stock prices have gotten frothy and exercising that defensiveness. Uh, we think it's prudent. But as far as our broad market uh, perspective, nothing uh, you know, crucially important to report there. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. We, we really encourage you to reach out if you have any questions. Certainly read the whole DividendCafe.com this week. We encourage you to check out our new web property, marketepicurean.com, which we want to do some real high-end and, and a little more sophisticated investment writing. It will have a much less broad audience, so to speak. It will only appeal to, to folks that are maybe uh, interested in a little bit different vocabulary and different 
subject matter expertise, but we think we'll add value to those that are of interest. So check out those web properties, reach out with questions, and thank you for listening to Dividend Cafe.